Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. I really like researching recent IPOs onto not only the ASX but also international exchanges. There are a few reasons behind that, but when I'm talking about researching IPOs, I'm not talking about companies that will be IPOing in the next few weeks or next few months or companies that have just IPOed onto the market in the last few days. I'm talking about waiting a few months, and the reason I like to wait a few months is twofold. The first reason is I do find there can be a bit of hype behind an IPO and you can see the share price of that company being elevated a little bit and as that hype wanes away, you can see the share price fall back a fair bit over the next uh, two or three months after an IPO. The other reason I do like to wait is I want to see the first uh, financial results the company uh, gives the market as a publicly listed company. So sometimes you do have to wait at least six months before that happens on the ASX. In the United States, it can be only three months because they actually report their financial results on a three month rolling basis. The reason I really like to research recent IPOs is because a lot of fund managers and professionals prefer at least a few years of financial data as a public listed company before they even think about buying into a company. And that gives retail investors the opportunity of buying into a quality company at good value. And that's exactly what I found with this company, uh, DRA, that I'll be featuring in this video. There's definitely a possibility there could be some good value here. And when you just look at the surface, significant value, but when you dig a little bit deeper, there are some skeletons in the closet with this company, although uh, not really in the closet because they're not hiding the skeletons. They did put it into the prospectus, some of the issues they are facing. And that's maybe the reason why this company is looking really cheap right now. But it can be also looking cheap because a lot of uh, investors don't really know the story about this company. And that gives us the opportunity to possibly buy into this company at really good value. So before we touch upon why this company is looking good value, why there could be some skeletons in the closet, just a few facts in regards to DRA. DRA call themselves an engineering, engineering services company, and when I look at what they do, I'd probably call themselves, for them, a mining services company. Hence, I'll just uh, put in here engineering slash mining services. They definitely service mining companies. They were founded in South Africa in the year 1984. They have moved their headquarters to Perth in the last few years. I think that's just to expand their business into Australia. And they listed on the ASX on 9th of July, 2021. One of the main reasons they did list on the ASX wasn't because they needed money for any acquisitions or they were running out of cash. It was simply to give some of their shareholders the opportunity of cashing out. And that's not a bad thing. I don't mind um, shareholders who have maybe put some of their investments into a company as a private company, uh, allowing them the opportunity to cash out of that investment. The CEO of DRA is Andrew Nord. He has a 2.2% stake in this company, so a little bit of skin in the game there. But the biggest skin in the game is when you combine the shareholdings of management and employees, that totals 45%. So significant skin the game right there with management and employees. That can be a good thing. It also can be a bad thing. So a lot of skin the game, they have a lot of stake in the future of this company, but because uh, there's not a lot of shares on issue to um, you know the retail market, um, that means there can be some liquidity issues. And that's one small issue with DRA. There's not a lot of shares traded on a daily basis. It's not horrible. There are shares traded every single day, but it's not like Telstra or the banks where there's a trade happening every single second. The market cap of DRA, $190 million at $3.50. And when we look at the next slide, which is looking at some of the financials, that does look really good value for a company that is profitable and producing a fair bit of money in their operations. And of course, the ticket code for DRA is DRA. I'm going to look at two financial results for DRA. The first one is the calendar year 20 results or the financial year 20 results. So the calendar year and the financial year aligned for DRA. So in the next slide, we'll look at the half year results, which they just recently released. 
revenue for calendar year 20, $938 million. So they're producing a lot of revenue. And they were operational cash flow positive by $102 million. And if you take away the leases, because with the accounting standard changes, the AASB something or rather, leases were taken away from the operating cash flow. And I think for companies like retail companies, you do have to take that into account because uh, paying money for leases is an everyday business thing, uh, operation business thing. So I do think you have to take that into account. And DRA did spend $40 million of leases. So if you take that away from the operating cash flow they did report, you still get $61 million. And for a company with a markup of $190 million, that is still looking real good value. They spent $8.4 million on capital expenditure, not too much, and they were profitable by $26 million. And again, with a company having a market cap of $190 million, having net profit after tax of $25.6 million, again, that is shouting. There is potential really good value here. Gross margin is about 20%, which is not that not too high or too low for a mining services company. You will find that sort of the normal in any sort of mining um, companies. Uh, I think the average might be about 24% for mining companies. So a little bit lower than the average of every single company on the exchange. I think the average is about 40, 42%, but normal for this industry. And they had net cash at the end of the calendar year 20 of $184 million. And remember, the market cap of this company was $190 million. So the enterprise value, because they don't have any debt or much debt, that means the enterprise value is not that high at all, something like 10 to $20 million. And that is screaming bargain. But there are some reasons why I think the enterprise value and the market cap of this company seems a little bit low. And we'll talk about that towards the end of this video. On to the half year results, the company did release a revenue up to $569 million. So looks like when they release their financial year 21 results, we're going to see over $1 billion of revenue for this company. And again, margins aren't that high, so not a lot of that falls to the bottom line. And you can see that with operating cash flow, only $2.5 million, and the net profit after tax, $16.6 million. But it is looking like that will increase from the previous financial year. Unfortunately, gross margins did fall away a little bit to 18%. Now, when it comes to the net cash, this is really interesting. They quoted net cash as being $103 million, but the cash on hand was about $155. They don't have much debt, and so the way to calculate the net cash uh, or net debt is just to look at the cash, take away the debt, and you get about $150 million. But they did mention that uh, there are some reasons behind why they quoted the net cash as $103 million uh, because of some considerations about some put options and stuff like that. Now, I did like oh, I did want to take the conservative approach and use the numbers they provided, which means enterprise value of DRA is $87 million. And that does seem fairly low, even on a conservative basis. So you calculate the enterprise value to operating cash flow, you get 1.5. That's really low for a company like this. So this company is screaming, there is value here. So the question I had as I saw all these numbers is why is the value of this company really low? Why is this company cheap? There must be some reason behind it. And again, we'll touch upon this towards the end of this video. The next few slides, I'm just going to look at some things they provided in the prospectus. And this is one thing I do for every company, or every IPO I am researching. I go back to the prospectus because you get a lot of information, now, over 100 pages of what they're doing, and also you get a lot of financial data, and so it's a great source of information. So the prospectus is aimed towards those who buy into the IPO, but it's out there for everyone to have a read, and so when I do research, the first thing I go to is the prospectus, and in this slide here, it shows you the services they do provide for the mining industry, and so they are providing services throughout the life cycle of a mine. So project development, project delivery and execution. So uh, those wouldn't be recurring, but that's 46% of their revenue. But operations and maintenance is 54% of DRA's revenue, and a lot of that would be recurring. So I do like recurring revenue, and the majority of their revenue is recurring based off this slide right here. Always like to see a company provide any sort of long-term strategies. I do like five to 10 years 
of uh, the strategy a company is employing. And with DRA, we do have strategy out to 2024. So right now we're into the phase two growth. So we've gone through the phase one foundation, the building phase, to bring it together, 20 and 21. And now we're in the phase two growth, continue growth, geographic expansion. Seems like they have done that as they've moved their headquarters to Perth. Uh, service offering scale and diversity, deeper market penetration, and acquire complementary businesses. That's probably the area I would be looking for or looking at in DRA. Then making some acquisitions because as you become a publicly listed company, uh, better access to capital, and that means greater opportunity to acquire businesses in the future. Always nice for companies in their prospectus to provide us with uh, growth history of revenue because that's exactly what I look for in a company that I am thinking about investing in. And here they have provided us with six years, actually it's five years of revenue data and their forward projections for financial year 2021. And we are seeing revenue growing at a compound annual growth rate of 19% per year. A little bit of mergers and acquisitions in there, but most of this is organic growth. And they are forecasting revenue to be $1.2 million for this financial year. In table 30 and 33 of the prospectus, they did provide us with some guidance to the financials for calendar year 2021. So even though we're only halfway through it right now, they did give us some guidance. And that's really good because most companies do provide this in the IPO, but we can see how the company has performed compared to guidance as we look at their financial year 21 results. Revenue, they've already touched upon that in the previous slide, 1.2 billion of revenue, and they are expecting profit to be around about 33 to 34 million, EBITDA to be about 72 0.5 million. They even provided operating cash flow guidance. Not a lot of companies do this, particularly those companies that have already listed on the ASX. They always talk about revenue and maybe EBITDA guidance, but very rarely does do companies provide operating cash flow guidance. And DRI is expecting operating cash flow for uh, kind of the year 2021 to be around about $57 million. So it is growing year on year, particularly from last year, down a little bit from calendar year 2019, but definitely uh, when you consider the valuation of this company under $200 million, a company providing $56.9 million in operating cash flow does seem a little bit uh, too good to be true. Now we get to the skeletons of the closet for DRA. And to be fair with DRA, these aren't in the closet because this is open. This was in the prospectus, towards the end of the prospectus, in a session called Leading Legal Proceedings. And there are four claims, legal claims, against DRA. There's one claim that DRA did make against another company, and then that company counterclaimed against DRA. And when you add up all these claims against DRA, it adds up to over $300 million Australian. In fact, well over $300 million because one of these claims in itself is $278 million. Now, this is quite common, I'm finding, in the mining services and mining industry. There's a lot of suing going on. Um, it's quite, I'm not sure if this is abnormal or if this is normal year on year, but there's a lot of uh, legal action going on in this area. So this is not to be surprised. But the fact they have four legal claims right now they have to work through is a little bit concerning. I think that's the reason why the market is um, valuing this company quite low because they don't like this potential risk. Because worst case scenario, DRA will have to pay over $300 million. Now, more than likely the parties, the legal parties of DRA and these companies that are uh, uh, suing DRA will come together in a civil way and produce some sort of workaround so they don't have to go to court. And more than likely, it won't be anywhere near $300 million that DRA will have to pay. But the market doesn't know that now. So they're thinking worst case scenario. And that's why the market is valuing DRA at quite attractive levels right now. So maybe if you are risk averse, the best way to move forward is just to wait to see how these legal claims play out. Or if you are a risk taker because the value of this company is quite low, maybe now is the time to take a position in this company. But you just have to be aware that there are these four legal claims against DRA that are going on right now.
Last thing I always look at for a recent IPO is just the chart. And I've already mentioned that a lot of times there is, can be a bit of hype behind an IPO, and sometimes you will see a share price high, either on the day the company lists or over the next few weeks after listing or subsequent weeks after listing. And actually, that's exactly what happened with DRA. The share price high was about eight days after they listed. The share price got to about $4.70 uh, in July, and the share price has been drifting lower. Uh, now, those first few weeks, we didn't see much volume, so not a lot of trading happening, and that's actually a good thing. We've seen volume sort of uh, going sideways, but the share price has been drifting down. The recent share price low occurred in August at $3.20, and for full disclosures, I have put a bid in for DRA at $3.20. So if the share price hits that position, that could be a double bottom. And if the share price goes below $3.20, say $3.10, $3, I might just sell out because that would mean the share price is continuing to fall. So at this point in time, not a lot of hype, current hype in the company. Share price is just going sideways. And I think one of the reasons is just because these legal claims against the company, the market is just waiting. It just wants to see what happens uh, moving forward with those legal issues that DRA is facing at this point in time. That is all I have for this uh, IPO video on DRA. If you have any questions about this company or any other company on the ASX, particularly any IPOs that you've seen in recent times, I'd love to hear your opinions on those companies on DRA and, of course, on any other company that you do have a bit of an interest in. So leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.